This camera is kind of at a weird angle. I haven't vlogged in the car while driving since I got my new car a few months ago. And I'm kind of in a little bit of a rush this morning, so I just kind of stuck it to the windshield because I didn't have a lot of time to fuss with it, but hopefully this works okay. Happy Saturday. Welcome back to another vlog. I am on my way to the salon. I have technically two clients but i have a third one coming in for a quick little fix but i wanted to say thank you for all of the comments and feedback on my last vlog that was the one where i was having a really bad day that was actually like two saturdays ago now at this point because i was out of town last week and yeah i don't know it was just one of those rough days at work where I was just over it and I was like, oh my god, this is the part of being a hairstylist that I hate. Like, these are the kind of days that make this job not the greatest. And I like to share those things, like the highs and lows of this career and just life in general, but I'm always like a little hesitant because I feel like anytime I say anything that's not super positive and like happy and upbeat i will get at least a few comments that are like you're always complaining you're so negative if you don't like it then just don't do it or you you know whatever like just stupid shit like that and <laughs> my intention is not to come off like whiny and negative and i did get a couple of comments like that but for the most part i had a lot of fellow hairdressers and just service industry professionals saying that they could relate and not happy that you can relate and have had similar experiences but it's nice that at least like we can talk about these things and feel less alone and i know there's like i don't know some people feel weird about me sharing negative experiences with clients on the internet that's fine but it is what it is and we all have these bad experiences and some people sometimes can be really shitty and inconsiderate and we should be able to talk about that stuff so that way we know we're not alone when these things happen and that way we can learn from each other's experiences and i feel like anytime i have a bad experience or i hear a coworker have a bad experience i'm like okay how can we handle that differently next time so hopefully hearing my stories, my complaining, if you will, can be helpful for other people that are in the industry. Or even if you're not, if you're just a client, hearing about this stuff, maybe it's like, oh, I never saw it that way before. I never realized that when I blow off an appointment last minute and don't call to cancel, that that's wasting that person's time and that person is losing money and that's you know it's it's really affecting them and it is a bigger deal than i realized you know but yeah like i was saying i have three people coming in it's gonna be a little bit of a crazy day because things kept getting moved around i had someone cancel a couple days ago so i moved a client up a little bit and then someone reached out and wanted an appointment last minute so i was like oh i should take it and squeeze her in because otherwise I don't have anything available until September so yeah now I kind of have myself triple booked which I normally don't like to do because I don't have an assistant at the moment so uh it's a little tricky to juggle that many people at once and I normally prefer to give my clients like my full attention anyway I don't want people to feel like they're just sitting and having to wait for me and being like forgotten about or neglected but every so often i just have to do that because i have limited availability right now so i am trying to just like fit in as many people as i can so that way people don't have to wait like months for an appointment but yeah sorry i'm going on such a tangent <laughs> three clients today my first one is new she's a little bit more of like a color correction so that should be interesting. Um, and then I have my fix coming in. That last vlog that I posted that bad day I was having, I was talking about how my one client, her hair in the front, like just her money pieces were, she, she said she was seeing warmth. So I highlighted them a second time while she was there. She still felt like they looked kind of warm. 
So she's coming back in today and we are gonna redo it and I'm just gonna leave those foils to sit for as long as we need to until they come out as like icy white as she wants. And after this, I'm gonna, like if she still isn't satisfied, I'm just gonna be like, I am sorry. I, there's nothing more I can do for you. I think we're just not a good fit for each other. And then my last client is one of my regulars and she is just getting a single process root retouch. So, um, and she doesn't have a lot of hair, so she's pretty quick and easy and also a very sweet angel. I think I'll be able to swing it all and have everything flow smoothly, but we shall see. So this was my first client's hair. She was a color correction. She had bleached underneath like the bottom layer of her hair herself. And you'll see in a second, it was very splotchy and uneven. And then the top half of her hair, she actually box dyed. And this was her inspiration picture on the right. You could see on the left, like the splotchy layer on the bottom where she bleached it herself. So I let her know that the inspiration picture was probably not going to be a realistic goal, at least for this first appointment, especially because her hair, I don't know if you could really tell from the photo, but it's super fine and it just felt very fragile and a little bit damaged. She also had told me that for her haircut, she wanted to keep as much length as possible. So I knew that keeping her hair healthy and long was the number one priority. So sometimes you have to pick what you prefer. And in this case, we chose to sacrifice lightness for health and length. So I told her that we could get the placement, the inspiration picture it was just very, very blended a really long dragged out root, but a thicker boulder, but still blended money piece. So that is what I did. I just did a full head of teased slices and I just changed up my developer strength depending on like what section I was on her head. Obviously I didn't wanna use anything like super strong on the back. And I left that pre-lightened section on the bottom last so that it wouldn't sit in process for too long then in between i took a demi permanent color and i saturated all of like the little teased sections that way she wouldn't have any of that like warm kind of orangey box colored brown left and it would just be a really nice seamless blend from her natural root color into the blonde so here I'm just toning her and then this was her final hair. I didn't have time, unfortunately, to get any good pictures outside in natural lighting. So you can't really see like the true tone of the hair because the salon lighting is very warm, but it was a really pretty beigey blonde and she was super happy with it. I told her we could do another session if she wanted to get lighter, but she was happy to just leave it as is. And I was really happy with the results too. I feel like everything came out really nice and blended and even and I feel like you can't even tell what her hair had looked like before we started. I didn't end up getting many clips of my other clients but this was my redo one. I had just popped a few foils in her money piece to brighten it up and she ended up being happy. Thank god. I'm done. It is two o'clock. 204 to be exact. I just finished, just checked out my last client. It was crazy and it was nonstop. I brought a croissant with me. Didn't get a chance to eat it. I've had to pee since I got here. Haven't had a chance to do that. I didn't have a single moment at all to stop for a second. I've just been go, go, go. But it worked out and I finished right on time. Right at the time that I was hoping I would. But now I have all of this to clean up. I have all of these sinks and color bowls over there. Got color bowls in the mixing room and tubes of color I have to put away. So let's uh, do a quick, speedy time lapse cleanup.
turn off all the lights, unlock up, and get the hell out of here. She's old and miserable, and she's probably just bored and just looking to get, like, how do you call that? Um, some validity somewhere? Like, oh, thank you for pointing that out to us. Hi. It's almost a week later. So earlier in this vlog, that day that I had recorded was the day where all of this went down. And it's crazy because I literally said in the vlog, I like referred to one of my clients that day as one of my regulars who's super sweet and she's great and like so easy and amazing and da da da. I thought, as I said in the vlog, I thought that Saturday went very smoothly. My first client was a color correction. As you saw, I explained the whole situation and everything. You saw her hair, what we had to do with it. And then my second client was like the redo, sort of, if you even really want to call it that. I had did her hair a couple weeks ago. She wanted it really, really like white and icy and the pieces in the very front just like the money piece didn't get as bright and as white as she wanted it was the slightest bit warm and she didn't like that so i offered for her to come back in so i could re-highlight it to make it brighter it was literally one little spot it was very very quick it took me maybe five minutes to apply if even and she just sat and was totally fine and had her mimosa and was good and then my third client was just down for a single process so I thought okay that's pretty easy too like I said she's my regular I already know her hair I already have her formula her hair is very fine so I know that it's like very quick and easy to do she doesn't take long to blow dry and every so often we do highlights as well this was only the third time I've done her hair so the first time she came in I matched up her color because she was new to the area. She had color done by another stylist in a different state. We do a coppery, kind of like strawberry blonde base color, and then she gets highlights to add dimension to it. So the first time I color matched, got it perfect. She was super happy with it, loved the color. We did a couple highlights to add the dimension, brighten it up, whatever. And then I told her, let's not do highlights every single time because if you keep doing that the base color can kind of get lost in the highlights you end up getting a little bit too blonde and rather than having to then throw low lights in like that to me is just so like just doesn't make any sense so i was like let's just do highlights like every few appointments you know like we can kind of just play it by ear and see when you feel like you need it and the first two times i did her hair she was super happy and she loved it and she just kept gushing over like how happy she was how much she loved the color how she felt like it just complimented her so well and it lasts so well it looks so good da, 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 whatever she was happy and always like so nice to me and so pleasant and the first time I did her hair she was like technically double booked but it was my friend that was there at the same time so like obviously I gave the cl the client top priority because my friend you know like she's just coming and getting her hair for free so like she can just hang out and chill she came in for her second appointment she was single booked she was my first client of the day nobody else came in until after i was done with her then her third appointment which was earlier in this vlog this past saturday i had her technically triple booked and she did have to sit a little bit her appointment time was supposed to be an hour and a half long she was there for two hours so you know five minutes here five minutes there having to sit for a little bit obviously her color has to sit and process so i'm not going to just sit there like talking to you while your color is processing like i have other things to do whether i have other clients there or not i have to go clean up i maybe need to go use the bathroom maybe eat something for the first time all day drink some water but anyway her consultation you know i was like if, if you feel like you want to do highlights we can definitely pop some in but i don't really feel like you absolutely need them just yet i do think we can stretch it and wait another appointment and then next time we'll definitely do some and she was like oh yeah okay that sounds good to me that's fine so i went and mixed up her root color i put that on we chatted while i was doing 
her roots and then she had to sit and process so then i went and i was like washing my other clients color out and doing other things and but i had set a timer and then once that timer went off i went and i rinsed her color out and i it it all lined up and flowed really well she was there at the end of the color correction appointment when the girl was leaving and i had you know said like I, we didn't get as bright as you wanted but blah 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 all that so she wasn't there when the girl first came in to see what her hair looked like originally she was not there during the consultation she wasn't there during the application process she had no idea what i did to that girl's hair what the situation was what the backstory was nothing also is not a cosmetologist herself and does not know anything about hair color i finish everybody i have this lady as my last client blow drying her hair and at this point i'm like okay she's my last one left i'm gonna really take my time do a nice blowout i don't want her to feel like she was which by the way she was not neglected because the whole time she was in the same room as me i was right there the chair next to her i kept asking her are you good you feel okay can i get you anything she was kept saying she was fine oh no i'm good honey okay you know like i can understand if i left you in another room and i just disappeared for like an hour and you were like what's going on did she she forget about me you're right there i'm right there if you need something you're like i'm still trying to talk to you and you know i'm still acknowledging and that you're there and trying to give you attention but i'm also just working on other clients like that's what a lot of hairstylists do like that's you know anyway so i finish her hair i do her blowout and she's like i just i'm just not loving it i'm not i i don't like this like oh what are you not because i also mind you at this point i just had this crazy chaotic day i had to pee since i got there didn't have time to do that didn't have a single second to do anything i was go 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 non-stop the entire time so i'm like i still have to pee i just i have so much to clean up because i wasn't able to clean at all while i was working i just wanted to be done and i was like really relieved at that point like oh finally like i'm i'm finished and this day went really smoothly like that color correction went so well like i was feeling really good like everybody was happy everything was good and then for her to be like i'm not happy i don't like this i'm like wait what i didn't even know how to respond because i was so confused and like genuinely shocked because like what do you what don't you like about it i did the exact same color that i did the last two times because i made that formula for you and i wrote it down day one and i've it's the same thing i've been doing so nothing has changed why do you suddenly not like it now so i was like is it do you feel like it's a little too solid at the root now because we didn't do highlights and she was like yeah i think that's i don't know she wasn't really communicating well what she didn't like about it so i was like well you know i did the same color that i did the last few times if you feel like maybe it just is a little too solid for you we'll just definitely make sure to do highlights next time i just didn't want to do them too much because like i said i felt like if we overdid it then it would start to look too blonde and i know you really like the coppery strawberry color she didn't ask if i could highlight it then she didn't ask if she could come in any sooner to do the highlights like she wasn't really giving me much in, in a perfect world i should have said okay let's let's add some highlights now i didn't realize that you were going to feel that way about it so let, we can just add some highlights. When you've had a long day and it's just been nonstop and like, like whatever, I'm not trying to make an excuse, but it's just the reality. And I know that my fellow hairdressers can relate. When you've just had a crazy chaotic day and you don't have anybody to help you. And at this point I was the only person in the salon. Everybody else had went home, front desk had left. I had to check all my own people out myself, which isn't a big deal but it's like it takes that extra time and I was really trying my best to not have anybody sit around and wait you know I was trying to be as efficient with my time as possible oh and then she also had said to me can you not double book me anymore moving forward and I was like yeah I apologize if you don't like that that's totally fine I normally don't 
double book clients. It just was a crazy day today. You know, I've had limited availability and I've been out of town, so I've just been trying to fit everyone in that wants an appointment. I wasn't anticipating that it would be a problem. So that that is totally fine. I will make sure moving forward I can book you as my first client of the day. That way there's no chance that there, there will be any overlap. She paid, she booked her next appointment, and then left. It seemed okay. She didn't seem like that angry either. Like, I don't know. I was just kind of like, we'll do highlights next time then. My customer service definitely could have been better that day, and I'm not trying to make an excuse for that. And it's more than fair for her to not want to be double booked and to want to go to someone that will sit there with her while she's processing and talk to her the entire time and give her their full 100% attention throughout the entire appointment. That is totally fair to want that. And for her to feel maybe like I neglected her, like I wasn't prioritizing her enough, that's totally fair. But I thought like we addressed everything, we discussed that I will not double book her anymore moving forward, so that's taken care of. We talked about how we'll do highlights next time. That's taken care of. I thought we were good. Next day, I get a text from my boss and she copied and pasted an email that this client sent her and it was just ripping me apart. Basically saying that like, she didn't have a good experience. She wasn't happy with her hair. I should have highlighted it when I didn't. I had three clients at a time and I wasn't tending to her enough, which is all like, whatever, fine, fair. That was your experience, that's how you feel, fine. But then she starts talking about my other clients and she said that she had one girl there that was a redo that she was fixing because she wasn't happy with her hair the first time. You don't know the situation, you don't know what her hair looked like, you don't know what the redo was or what the issue was with her hair. And then she was talking about my color correction client and how, oh, then she had another client and she told her that it didn't come out like the picture, but they could lighten it and do another session next time. That's a very common thing, Whether, even if she wasn't a color correction. If you are coming in and you are trying to go from a dark color to super blonde, most of the time, it is going to take multiple sessions to get you where you wanna be, period. Like, that's just how it is, that's how it works. But especially when you are a color correction, and you saw how many different colors were in that girl's hair, and how like uneven and splotchy it was, and like if you could feel the actual texture of her hair too, like the fact that it was kind of damaged to begin with played a big part in it as well. Th that's just, that's not how these things work. It's not like you show me a picture and if I'm a good stylist, I can give you exactly what the picture looks like and then that's it and it's woo, easy, simple. No, like it it has nothing to do, like it, it that is not a reflection of me as a stylist or my abilities and my skills. Like you are just a moron who does not know anything about hair and color. And that's fine. No one is expecting you to, but don't speak on things that you know nothing about. And not only speak about them, but go and email my boss and try to, what, get me in trouble? Like what is the point of even bringing up my other clients. It's none of your business. It has absolutely nothing to do with you. The outcome of their hair, what they were there for, whatever, does not affect you at all whatsoever. You're trying to use that as ammunition to tell my boss that I don't know what I'm doing. The conclusion to her email was that she wants to be with someone that's more experienced because she just doesn't trust me, doesn't think I'm experienced enough, and doesn't think that I have good knowledge with hair color. Even though the last two times I did her hair, she was raving about how much she loved it and was super happy with it. Now all of a sudden you had one bad experience because I didn't give you 
the attention that you wanted now all of a sudden I'm a terrible stylist and I don't know what I'm doing and because I didn't do highlights on your hair it's not like I'm fried your hair off messed up the color I could understand if like the color was really bad and just didn't come out right it was uneven if it didn't match with the rest of your hair if your hair got damaged if there were splotches or I messed up your haircut or you know like things like that no I didn't do highlights on her hair oh and, and so she specifically said that now her hair looks like she just threw Sally's box color on it I obviously explained like the full situation to my boss and she knows my experience and she knows that I obviously know what I'm doing I hate feeling like now I have to defend myself and explain myself but like what was the point it's one thing if you're gonna complain to like your husband or your friend or whatever about it like oh and then she had these other clients there that da -da -da -da. but to go tell my boss what is the point of that like what was your intention there to get me in trouble to have for there to be some type of repercussion to get me in trouble to get me fired what did I do to you that you hate me so much now all of a sudden when you've had good experiences with me before? I know that she like has some stuff going on in her personal life and I was just on the phone with my mom a little while ago and I was like, you know, maybe it's that. Like I, I'm trying to just give her benefit of the doubt and like not take it personally and like maybe she just has stuff going on and she's just kind of lashing out and maybe I, I feel like when you have a lot happening to you that's like out of your control when you finally do have something where you feel like you can take control a little bit you take that opportunity and you might lash out on someone that doesn't necessarily deserve it but my mom was like yeah but I could understand if she was like making a scene in the salon like in the moment but the fact that she went home and like slept on it and like waited a whole day and like typed that out and then still chose to hit send like that feels very malicious and like thought out and not just like a heat of the moment kind of thing it's really not a big deal and that's the thing I feel like whenever I vent about this kind of stuff like I said in the last vlog I feel like I always will get comments where people are like well you should just not do this job then or you should do this at the end of the day it just is what it is you're not gonna always make everyone happy you're not gonna always click with everyone and the way that you do things a bunch of people might absolutely love it and think that you were the best and then there's some people that think you suck that's fine you know it just is what it is and there's no avoiding it you can be the best stylist out there and you can try to be as perfect as you can but at the end of the day we're human and sometimes you just have a bad day where you're stressed you're overwhelmed maybe your schedule is a little bit chaotic maybe like you're running behind because of something you're rushing whatever like shit happens sometimes or maybe your client is just really impossible to please and is difficult and you know what i mean like you just can't avoid this kind of stuff. And it sucks that just a couple weeks ago, in my last vlog, I had a rough day, and now I had another one, like, back to back. But really, like, in the whole, like, past year almost, since I started doing hair again, it's been smooth sailing, and it's been really great, and I haven't had any issues with clients. It was bound to happen obviously that client wasn't the right fit for me and that's totally fine and it's for the best it's kind of a relief to like not have her on my schedule anymore and yeah i don't mean to like harp on it and make it a bigger deal than it is but i do like to share these things a because it's nice to vent <laughs> um but b i know that i don't know whenever i go through experiences like this like obviously now days later I'm just kind of like all right whatever I've bitched about it enough I've processed it I've I'm like it's fine but still like it really sucks when stuff like that happens because it's like so shocking and then you feel terrible and you replay like everything that happened and you're like okay what went wrong like what should I have done differently and you feel like a failure and you feel so alone like I 
remember sitting there thinking like i know that this happens all the time to other stylists but it would be so nice to like talk to somebody else or hear somebody else's story and hear that something similar happened to them recently because then it would just make me feel less alone and make it feel like okay this just happens it's normal it's common so that's why i like to share this stuff too so that you know when it inevitably happens to you at some point because it's unavoidable you're not alone it is what it is try to it's hard to not take it personally especially if like i i feel like that it i feel attacked it felt very personal so it's hard to not take it personally but i'm trying to just be like it's just a job and can't satisfy everybody it worked out for the best anyway and also i just felt like i because i had vlogged that day too i was like i can't just leave it off there like i have to share what ended up happening because it was like wow what a turn of events that's about it I'm gonna go like do my skincare and get ready for bed. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.